right, everyone, good to see you. Chris Matson here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve the wind turbine CAD fluency test. Let's do it. So I have started up SolidWorks, and I have uh, downloaded all the files for the test. So I'm going to just open up the test now and start taking a look at this. Going to re be reading through this and making a CAD strategy. That's the first thing I want to do is be making myself a CAD strategy. Also, I'm going to keep track of time here just so I know how I'm doing. It's 9.30 in the morning. Okay, so there are four main parts to the assembly. There is the terrain, which is supplied, yay. There's the tower, which it looks like I'm going to need to create. The nacelle generator, which is provided, but I need to create a nacelle cover. And then the blade, and then I also need to make an assembly. Okay. Now I can see here that the main goal of this test is for me to make a wind turbine tower that automatically updates when the configuration of the terrain is changed. The tower location and the bottom of the tower must update correctly. In addition, the nacelle generator, the nacelle cover, and the blades must change locations correctly when the terrain configuration is changed. So I need to go into the files and take a look at what's going on here. I'm going to open this up here. OK, let's see. Uh, open. I'm going to go over to here, provided parts. OK, here, in the train subassembly, terrain subassembly. Let's open up this train subassembly and see what we got. <clears throat> All right, so here's my terrain, and there is the uh, slab and the foundation. The foundation is red, the slab is gray. If I, okay, let's see if we can, okay, look. This is the tower axis. Yeah, the tower axis. Okay, great, going back over to the assignment here. The three configurations differ only in the slab, the foundation, and the location of the tower axis. See the reconfigurable tower engineering drawing. So let's go see if we can find that engineering drawing. Okay, this one's the wind turbine assembly. Wind turbine assembly, wind turbine assembly, uh, reconfigurable tower. Okay, tower axis. This is already existing in the terrain subassembly. And I got the terrain and I got the tower axis. And I got the tower axis over here. The tower locations change based on the terrain configuration. Okay. All right. We're going to see what's on the next one here. Nothing about the axis. Okay. So I'm going to go back over to SolidWorks here for a minute. And I'm going to right click on here and change from the default to location one. And let's see if we how this works. OK, look, the tower axis has changed. And so has the base, so is the foundation. Let's go do this again here into location two. OK, great. So it looks like I need to make a tower that is in line with that axis. And um, it's going to have to do something with this base. So let's take a look here. 25% of the grade here is tower. Using the supplied CAD files for the terrain subassembly, create a solid CAD model of the tower. Follow these instructions. Deliverables. I'm going to have two masses, a mass of the tower in location one, a mass of the tower in location two. For reference, the correct mass of the default configuration is 500,000 pounds, basically. Also at the end of the test, pack and go. OK. The tower units are IPS. The tower material is AISI 1020 steel. The finish is painted, spray painted, color is 255, 255, 255 is white. Other critical dimensions can be found in the subterrain assembly drawing. 
If missing information necessitates it, make some assumptions. Okay, make the tower model using master modeling techniques so that when the provided terrain subassembly is changed, the tower automatically updates. Okay, and then there's a discussion here about how the work's going to be evaluated. Okay, let's do it. I'm five minutes into the test. Need to, um, need to take a look at the drawing and then make a CAD strategy and then do the work. So here we go. Reconfigurable tower, wind turbine, Tower axis, tower, terrain. Tower has a constant wall thickness of eight inches for all configurations. Okay. I'm trying to figure out how to zoom on this. Okay. Um, this tower top. Okay, what am I looking at here? Okay, I'm looking at detail E, which is right here. The tower top is 132 inches. I'm in IPS down here. The tower has a circular top that is always concentric with the tower axis. The size is constant for all terrain configurations. The tower has a rectangular base that changes location and size based on the terrain location. Tower location, okay, the slab automatically change shape Tara must be modeled. Okay, great. I understood what's on that page. Now this next page. The distance from the bottom of the slab, not the terrain, in okay, case so we can see that there, to the top of the tower is the same for all configurations, and it's 3720 inches. The tower is modeled to match the foundation exactly at this interface and around all four sides of the foundation. The tower is modeled to match the slab exactly at this interface. Okay. And that's the last of the drawings for those. So I can tell there's a couple of things going on here. If I'm going to match the shape of something exactly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to want to use surface offsets. And this is particularly true here where we have these really strange surfaces everywhere that can't be, that can't be um, sort of dimensioned on those drawings. So I'm going to go back over to uh, t default. I'm going to work on the default. I don't think it matters which one I work on, but I'm going to work on default here. Okay. So my strategy then is going to be, I'm going to create a new assembly. In that assembly, I'm going to bring in this terrain subassembly. Then I'm going to create a new part within that overall assembly, and it's going to reference the foundation and the slab and the tower axis. If I do that, I have done what it says right here. I have matched the foundation at all sides. I've matched the slab at this face, and I can get the center of this circle to always be lined up with the tower axis if I do it in that way. So that's what I'm going to go do now. I'm nine minutes in and I got my strategy for my first, my first thing here. So first thing I'm going to do is, looks like I need to save this. Don't know why I would need to save it. I guess I've changed configurations. I'm going to create um, a new assembly. And I guess I'm going to make an assembly from this assembly. So let's just do it that way. And I'm just going to need to click in there anywhere. OK, not entirely sure what this sketch is, but we're just going to go with that. OK, and we're going to call this one Save As Wind. Well, Wind, well, why can't I spell here? Wind Turbine. All right. And I'm going to save it in this spot. OK. Now in this, I've only got the terrain subassembly at this point. I'm somewhat distracted by this uh, sketch that's appearing here. So I guess I can come up here and hide the sketches. That will help. Okay. 
I don't know that it will help. Maybe I need that later. I actually would like to see uh, the axis, which is the tower axis. I'm going to need that one. OK, so what I'm going to do now in this assembly, I've saved it. It's got a name. It's saved. I'm going to create a brand new part. I'm going to insert a new part. And I'm going to call this one the tower, just plain old tower. Okay, I'm going to call this one tower. It's going to want me to place this somewhere, but I prefer to place it not somewhere random. I want to place it somewhere, I don't know where. It doesn't really, I don't know that it matters, but I am going to use this front plane because that looks like how the slab was made, and I want it to be oriented to that nicely. So I'm going to say go on that, and I'm just going to save this just to make sure things got saved right. OK, I now have a thing called tower. Let me turn off these planes. Now the thing called tower, and I'm going to uh, go in here and edit the tower. Great, excellent. Now I'm ready to go get some important surfaces out of here. Okay, just need to ponder on this for a second. Surfaces, gonna go to offset surface. Okay, first of all, this is showing up as millimeters. I need to be in inches. So I'm going to save this thing, first of all, as inches. And I'm gonna do this, which will save us. And I'm just gonna hit save on this just to make sure all this stuff is working out right. I'm gonna come in here and edit this part. OK, great. Now I'm going to go back over to Surface. Where's that? Surfaces, Offset Surface. Great. Now I'm in inches. Go down to zero. I want to have uh, this surface. Yes. And I want to have this surface and this surface and this surface and this surface. You're going to take those. OK. Now I also know that the height of this is going to be based on the slab. Where's the slab? The height of this is based on the slab, so I need to come in and get another surface that I'm going to use as a reference. So I'm going to take this terrain and hide it for a minute, get out of this cross-section view. And I'm going to make another back in and edit this. I'm going to come back in here and get one other offset surface. This is going to be uh, for me to do a little bit of um, so I'm going to dimension the top of my towers from that surface. So I want to make sure those appear in my new model. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into the part and let's hit the F here so I can get all my parts. Okay, we need to do some trimming. Let's see if we can trim this up. Okay, so can I do this? Yes. And this. And this, I'm holding shift click click all of these entities. I've grabbed those. Now I can say trim and do this. And I don't want that anymore. And that is the bottom of my tower, maybe. What do these corners look like? Yeah. That is the bottom of my tower. Now I'm going to loft. This is going to be my strategy. I'm going to loft from this section that's right here up to the circle that's at the top of the tower. So I'm going to need a section. And in this case, I'm going to create my section using a composite curve. And I'm going to click this guy, this one, whoops, this one, and this one. And this is going to be my composite curve. All right. Now, I'm just going to save this. Save. I'm going to jump out of this now and back into my wind turbine assembly. Oh yeah, OK, good. So we can see that now we don't have a double surface at the slab anymore like we did before. Let's turn this terrain back on. 
i.e. let's make it so we can see it. Um, oh yes, okay, great. So um, I actually need to do one more thing. And I think it's helpful for me to be back in my, in my tower model. So I'm going to open up my tower model again. And that is that I need a reference plane. Let's make these planes come back on here. I need a reference plane. Let me click on this surface, which is one I is the bottom of the slab. That one's the bottom of the slab. Now what I need to do is make a reference surface. Excuse me, a reference plane. We're going to flip the other direction. And this one is going to be something like 3,720 inches away. I have to go check that in a minute. OK, there we go. Let's go back and check the drawing. 3,720 inches from the bottom of the slab to the top of the tower. And that is the same for all turbine locations. So this is a, a fundamental part of how I'm creating my model. Let's see, back to tower model. OK, and I think that's right, but let's just go in and check that, make sure we got that 3,720. OK, excellent. Great, so I'm going to save this. Save, and I'm going to go back over to the wind turbine thing. And if I turn the planes on on this one, I should see that there's the top of my tower now that's right here. OK, excellent. So. What we are going to do is I'm going to now create, I'm going to edit the tower. I'm going to edit the tower in this assembly so that I can access the tower axis. Okay, I want to create a new sketch on this plane. Let me just look at that head on. Okay, if I do this again, I'll see the other side of it. There it is. Okay, now what I need is a circle that is right in there with that axis. Okay, gonna get myself a dimension on this and I cannot remember what it was, but it was like 124 or something like that. Um, fully defined. Okay, let's get, let's get out of this for a minute. Oh yes, 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 see there's the top of my tower and at least at the moment it appears to be concentric with that circle. Uh, we have to do is go get the right dimension for that circle though. 132. Okay. So back over to not this one. Let's save that. Uh, we want to go back into the this one right here. And I am going to edit this sketch. Am I in the sketch right now? No. I'm going to edit the sketch. This one's going to become 132. OK. Accept that. OK, I turned off my sketches. Remember that thing? So let's do that again. I can see the sketch that's right there. OK. So what I want to do now is I want to create a loft. going to turn off these planes because they're slightly distracting. Okay, there we go. I'm going to create a loft from the composite curve to sketch two. So let's go into features and we will, uh, the bottom of this thing is already surfaces. So I'm going to make my loft with surfaces, lofted surface, profile, um, composite curve, next profiles, the other sketch. Wonderful. This looks a lot like what I want. OK. So far, this is looking correct. Let's just save this. Save. We're going to run a little test here. And that is that we're going to move our terrain. OK. Terrain. How come I can't do that? What do we have going on here? OK. I want to. OK, tower, terrain, default, go to this location. Let's see what happens. Ooh, wonderful. OK, so it looks like my tower has stayed the way that it should be done. Let's go in here and switch this to number two. 
Great. Excellent. So that looks like that's working the way we want it to. Now what I'm going to do is go uh, make this 8 inch wall thickness that's supposed to be here. And I'm just going to do that in the tower model. That will be a little bit easier at this point. Let's turn off these planes right here. Okay. I'm going to come in here and I first need to close this off by making a plane, planar surface in here. Great. That's got me that thing. Now I'm going to knit these together and make it a solid. Okay, so I'm going to knit this thing with this thing. Did I get the bottom already? The answer to that is no. Oh yeah, okay. So I got to get this and this. And that's it. That's what I want to knit. I want to merge these together and create a solid. Boom, that's done. Let's see if this worked. Cross-sectioning that thing. I always like to check because I'm going along with things. Great, that worked. Done, get out of the cross section. Now what we're going to do is, since we have a constant wall thickness of eight inches everywhere, we are going to, what are we going to do? We are going to shell this out. Sketch, sketch, sketch features. Shell, where's my shell, where's my shell? Here's my shell. Okay, I'm gonna grab this top. I'm going to grab this bottom. I'm going to say I want this to be 8 inches. 8 inches, and I want to see a preview, and that's looking right. Wonderful. Okay, so at this point, it looks like we are settled. What we need to do is uh, apply the appearances, and we can do that right over here. Appearances painted, sprayed, whatever. I take this in here and then I have to go change the I have to go change the um, the color of this. Okay, edit appearance. Instead of being 000, oh, this is 15, 15, 15, 255. 255 and 255. 55. Okay. Save. File. Save. The tower is done. Let's go back over to our wind turbine assembly. It's white over there now. Let's just check this and see if this is working right. Go to location one. Updated. Let's go to location two. Great. Uh, excuse me, the default. And in this default, what we want to do is check the mass of the tower. So I'm going to open up my tower file now. Here's my tower file. It's in the default position. I'm going to go, oops, I never assigned any material for this. So uh, going back over to the design table here, material, edit material. We're going to be AISI 1020, apply, close. We don't want the appearance of this, so I have to go fix my appearance here. Hold on. Um, polished steel. Great. So um, I should not have told it that I wanted it to use the appearance of steel. I should have said that I wanted to keep my appearances that I had. So going back to this job again, 255 and 255. And again, 255, and we're back to white, and we have the right material now. Get back over to here. We are AISI 1020. Okay. All right. So we want to just check the mass of this. Evaluate the mass. It was around 500,000. Oh gosh. Mass. All right. The mass I've got here is. Four zero one seven three one one. Is this in pounds? Okay. Well, I have to do a double check on the um, test that I am going to release to you, which I have not done yet. And I will update that if it turns out this is wrong. So let's just see here for a second. 
Yeah, this is four million pounds. Four million pounds. Okay, is that right? Uh, I don't know. We'll just have to keep going for a little bit. But at least I know there's a potential problem here with my mass. Okay. And, and it's like the number I had was uh, significantly off in the, uh, in the test description version that I'm looking at here, which is 500,000. I'm not sure what would cause it to be eight times bigger. It's not eight times taller. It's not eight times thicker. It's not the wrong material. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess that we're right here. Or we're, we're uh, I don't know. I'll have to just double check this when we're done. Okay, so we're 25 minutes into the test. Save. We're going to go on to our next piece now. So I'm going to go back over to the wind turbine. And in the wind turbine, I'm going to um, take a look at what's said here. Model the blade, model the nacelle cover. OK, nacelle cover. I'm going to put, I'm going to first put the nacelle generator on the assembly, and then I'm going to make the nacelle cover. That's how I'm going to do that. OK, so that's what I'm going to do next. OK, so in here, I want to now uh, insert another component. I'm going to insert component. I want to go browse for this. Provided parts. OK, look, let's click this button down here, which will show us just assemblies. The cell generator assembly. Great. OK, I don't know why it wants me to do that, but we're going to just go with it. OK, now, first of all, I know that this sucker is going to go just right on top of this, this axis, and this axis. Oh, come on, can I pick this one? OK. Not sure what's going on there. Let's save this thing first. It's gotten a little funny. OK, now this thing's floating. Yep, floating. So we want to align. OK, why can't I grab this tower axis? I cannot grab the tower axis. I don't know why. Let's see if we can grab anything else in the model. OK, look. I want this, not the axis. OK. I want this face. And I want this face to be concentric with each other, excuse me, coincident with each other. OK, I don't know why I can't pick that. So I'm going to grab the axis, and then I'm going to try to Okay, I made the tower, terrain subassembly, terrain, tower axis, shift, click the tower axis. Can I do that? Tower axis, shift, click this one. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. It's all right. Um, I got to get this lined up with that, and I really want the tower axis and access to to stay aligned during all of the reconfigurations. Therefore, I really want that. OK, I grabbed the tower. Why can't I do that? Oh, look, I'm grabbing the tower down here. Oh, that's so weird. OK, well, I grab the tower here. I'm going to shift click into this one. Say I want that to be concentric. Yay. OK. And then the drawings say that the turbine is pointed in a particular way. Wind turbine points in this direction relative to the terrain. So um, this is the bumpy part of the terrain. It's in that direction. This is the corner shown in location one right now. So actually wanting to do this in the default position, which I am. 
Okay, there's the bump. So this whole thing, I need to get over sort of like this. Let's turn on some planes here so we can see what's going on. Okay. Right plane of the tower. Plane of the terrain. Okay, let's grab that one. And we'll grab this one. And we want these to be parallel. Okay, excellent. Let's turn off those planes so we don't have to look at them. And uh, save this thing. Save, save, save. Let's go try to change our terrain. Can I change it on this one? Yes. And see if our um, generator moves. OK. The mates have a problem. This feature had an error in the last update. OK, this mate overdefines the assembly. Coincident 5. Hmm, not sure what to make of that. Let's close this. And let's go look at the mates. And let's look at coincident 5. Nacelle. Oh, that, that said, oh, here, coincident 5 is the one where having a concern with, I think. Huh. OK, let's, let's rebuild this and see what the error said. The mates folder has the following problems. One or more mates cannot be satisfied. To correct this, examine the mates with the red error icons. OK. Yeah, so uh, oh, I was looking at the wrong folder of mates. Uh -huh. um, OK, if I hover on this one, it says, this feature had an error in the last update. Edit the dimension, OK, whatever. This one says, this component cannot be moved to a position with and satisfy this mate. OK, I don't know which one that is. So I'm going to. OK, so this one's to the tower. And I'm not sure what these two. I'm not sure what this one is. It's reds has an error. Let's delete it. We'll go add it back if we need to. OK, we're at least error free at this point. Let's rebuild it. Doesn't have a problem. Let's go into terrain. Change the location to the default. Probably going to get some kind of error, but I guess not. Let's check number two. That's moved. First of all, loving that we took a look at going back to the default. Um, loving that we checked the error, read the error, and have potentially got out of trouble, but I can see that the nacelle generator, dang it. OK, I can see that the nacelle generator is not fully defined. And I need to go find out where it's having a problem. Is it here? Yes, it's here. OK, why are we having a hard time with this one? OK, let's, uh, let's try to add this back in, see what happens. It's going to create an error, probably. OK, let's rebuild that. Let's go back into the terrain, change the location. Oops, got to hit go on that. Okay, now we're in the default location. Let's go to number two. That's working. Let's go to number one. This one gave us trouble before. Okay, great. I don't know what's going on with that. 
But my nacelle generator is now fully defined, my tower is now fully defined, and they move, which is great. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call that sort of good for now. And just like we know we have some trouble with our mass, we might be having some trouble with underdefined stuff. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create this other part, which is the um, the nacelle the nacelle cover. Okay. Look, there's that axis that goes right there. Okay, got to create the cover. So what I want to do now is I want to create the cover in this assembly so that when this assembly moves, the cover moves. Hmm. Okay, how are we going to do that? Let me just pause for a second here and go back and look at the engineering drawings. Central axis of the nacelle part is asymmetric around this axis. This cover matches the geometry of the nacelle body. The dimensioned outer geometry is for reference only. Okay, that's why there's references on there. I mean the reference parentheses. Detail C indicates a chamfer on the larger outer radius and the exterior bottom edges only. Where's detail C? Here we go. Detail C. Chamfer 0.545 over here 0.545. This profile is identical. Axisymmetric. Axisymmetric is a clue that this thing is revolved. So what we're going to do is we're going to go um, get this profile right here straight from the Excel, uh, the nacelle body that already exists. And then we're going to simply revolve it around that axis. So let's go try that. OK, so what we want to do now is insert component, new part. We want to call this one the nacelle cover, cover, nacelle cover. OK, it wants me to place this. So let's go get these planes turned on. And frankly, I'm going to go place it based on this right plane. It's right here. Can I click that one? Yep. OK. And yeah, now it's just popped it down in here somewhere. OK, now we're going to save this just to make sure everything is nice and clean in terms of it being connected. Oops, let's get out of this one. I probably um, am saving these more often than I need to, but I like to do this just to make sure that all the connections are staying clean. OK. So now we turn off these planes so we don't have to look at them. And now nacelle cover. OK, we're going to edit this one in place. Okay, so this icon over here is telling us we're editing that in place. And we want to create a new sketch uh, on this face right here, because I actually just want everything on this face. So I'm going to create a sketch. Am I in sketch mode? Yes. I'm going to convert entities. That whole entity is what I wanted to convert. And the answer to that is yes. And it's fully defined, which is excellent. OK, and then just open this up, take a look at what we're doing. There's our sketch. We're going to take this and create a solid revolve. And our axis of revolution is that one. Will it pick it? Why can't I pick it? Why will it not let me pick that? I might need to copy that axis over into um, let's try that and let's see if that works. Okay, so we'll cancel this for a second. Now we're in here. Let's let's create reference geometry in the nacelle cover. This might give us a lot of trouble, but let's just try it. Um, I want the axis to be the same as this axis. I don't know if this is a good idea, but let's try. OK, so now what we're going to do is create our revolve boss base. And the cross section that we want is this one. And the axis that we want is this one. And first of all, that's, that's kind of what we want, except that we don't want to do this. We want to go 
it said 140. <laughs> I thought it said 140. Um, obviously, it did not say 140. So let's go check the drawing. Uh, 120. 120 is this part. Okay, so I got to be, I got to be 360 minus this, so 240. Okay, back into here. And cell cover. Great, yeah, 240. 240. Okay, so I'm not sure if the axis that we just created is going to give us some trouble in the overall assembly. So, oh, look, our terrain disappeared. I don't know how that happened. Rebuild this. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay, let's see what happens now if our we want to see our nacelle head move around when the configuration is changed. So into terrain, change to location, to please work. That worked. Let's go check the default. That's working. Let's go check number one. That's working. I'm 45 minutes into the test now. So I got to do that blade. I actually start to do some nacelle cover stuff. So now I can go in, actually, now I can go into the nacelle cover and just open up this part and work on it by itself now. OK. Because there are some patterns, and, and there's a bunch of stuff we got to do here. So let's, let's just go back to the engineering drawing. OK, C, section C is telling me that there are some chamfers. Let's go add those chamfers. They're 0.5 by 45. They are, actually, I can see from this image here, they're on, they're on these faces, which is exactly what the note was saying. So let's go do that piece. And then we'll cut in, we'll cut in the, we'll cut in this up. So how are we going to cut these in, first of all? So I have to jump back and forth here. I am going to cut one right up here at the top, pop it down. Uh, and then I'm going to circular pattern it one way and circular pattern it the other way. So I'm going to need to create a plane up here that I can sketch on. Yeah, and then we're going to do we're going to do this thing right here, which is see if we can memorize it real fast. Seven inch diameter, I don't know, four inch diameter, three inch diameter, three inch. I don't know. I'm not going to remember all that. Let's just go back over here into the nacelle cover. Let's get our chamfer on here. Chamfer. We want to chamfer this edge. And what do we want? OK, first of all, we're in millimeters. We don't want to be in millimeters. I'm going to come down here into inches. And let's save this. Save. OK, now we want to come in here and make a chamfer. And we want to be 0.5. And items to chamfer are this one, and this one, and this one. Not entirely sure why we're not getting a preview on this thing, but uh, maybe it's trying to preview. Great, excellent. That's what we want on that. OK, then we're going to need to blast a hole right up here at the top. So we're going to make reference geometry that is offset from this. OK, we do not want to go that far. I don't know how, how far we are here. Wouldn't it be maybe like 50? Nope. Wouldn't it be like maybe 200? OK, it would be like 250. OK. We don't want to be too far away from that surface. 230. OK, that's not right. 240. OK, we're going to go with that. On this plane, I'm going to create the geometry that's needed for the cut. OK, so first of all, there is, there is some sort of circle that's like this. And then there's another circle. And then there's another circle. And if I recall right, these were like 7. OK. First of all, let's start with the smallest one. I thought it said 3 inches. OK, that's going to be like tiny. Oh, no, that's 5 inches. 3 inches, 
and I think this one was like seven inches. No, this one was four inches. Hmm, I don't know what this was. Oh, those were radii, those were radii. So that means this one's eight. Yeah, 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 and then this one's 14. I'm just trying to remember the engineering drawing at this point. Well, mess that up. This guy needs to be deleted. Okay, get out of this dimensioning thing. Okay, delete this. Delete this. Smart dimension, this thing. This was 14. This is 14. Okay, I think that's what it is. Okay, back over to here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Radius seven, radius four, and so so this at this point this should be an eight. This should be a fourteen in the making the full circle, and then this thing is uh, three. So let's go back over to this. So cover. Okay, let's make a line right down the center, like this. Let's turn that into a construction line, so we don't have to worry about it. Take that line, let's offset it. Offset that entity, 1.5. And let's go bi-directional. OK, hmm, that's interesting. Um, yes, 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 yes. OK, so now we need to trim a bunch of stuff. OK, this and this and this and this, and this, and this. Am I doing this right? I hope so. OK, and then we got to trim these things and these things. OK, great. What I'm afraid of here, not afraid is not the right word, um, we are not fully dimensioned here. So why is that the case? Uh, okay, I'm just gonna pick this line. I was wanting not to because I wanted to make sure I wasn't picking the revolve. Did this say 22? I don't remember what it said. Okay, let's go check the engineering drawing. 22, yay. Okay, now going back over to this, the cell cover. Okay, am I fully defined on that sketch? No, that's troubling me. Let's go figure out why. Edit this sketch. Everything is black. I mean, there's these endpoints, but that's on a construction line, so that shouldn't matter. Okay, if I grab this stuff, I could maybe figure out what's going on. What is this? I don't know what that is. Okay, let's. Okay, I don't want to have an underdefined sketch there because it's just bad practice and it could lead to trouble. Let's um, let's go a little bit more down this path for a second. We're going to cut extrude this through. Just go through all. Okay, that's looking good. Now let's take this nacelle cover thing and pattern it. Circular pattern. Okay, the direction's gonna be this axis. Okay, it said there were eleven instances in total. Six. That means I gotta have six of these. Okay. I don't remember what the drawing said. Let's go check that out. Eleven instances of this feature. They are equally spaced over 140 degrees. Yeah. So. Yeah. So if I do six in one direction over 70 degrees and six in the other direction over 70 degrees. I'll get what I want. So in a cell cover, great. That's that. 
I can see actually I was supposed to add some fillets in there, which I did not do. So we're going to have to go fix that up in a little bit. OK, can I put a second direction on this? Direction 2. 70 and 6. It's going to work. And I want to be equally spaced. I think that's it. That's good. It's better that I did it that way because when I go in. <laughs> what the heck? Okay, rebuild this thing. What? Oh, what? Oh, what? It is this thing that's down here. Okay, I know what it is. Okay, this is a problem. <laughs> this thing right over here was a through all cut, so it's now appearing over here. I need to go change my extrude cut to not be through all, but instead to be blind, let's say. And let's, okay, look, let's make this like eight. We better make that like 15. <laughs> better make that like 20. Not two, 20. Okay, if I made it all the way through, let's see if we made it all the way through this, first of all. Okay, we made that all the way through. Okay, excellent. Wow. Glad to figured out what that was. Never saw that sort of problem before, but it's I guess it's obvious that that's what was going on. Okay, so before the circular pattern then, boom, I'm going to come up here. I want to get some fillets in this thing. And the items that I want to fill it are this. I want to fill all this stuff, but I'm just carefully picking them. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm eight minutes away from being an hour into the test. Okay, excellent. We need to switch this to one. A radius of one is what the document said. Excellent. So now we're going to come over here. We're going to open up our circular pattern. We're going to tell it we also want to take the fillet. How are we going to do that? We're going to come down here, click fillet, and we're going to see if that works. Let's hope it works. Excellent. Okay, we need to apply a decal now, and we need to change the material. Let's go back to the drawing and see what the material was. AISI 1020, steel, cell cover, AISI 1020. It's probably questionable whether this needs to be steel or not, but that's what it says, so that's what we're going to go for. ASI 1020, apply, close. Now we're going to come up here and change this to spray paint. And we're going to put it on the whole body. Then we're going to come over here and we're going to change that color from black to white, since that's what is calling for. A 255, 255, 255. OK, 255. Excellent. Okay, let's hide these planes. I don't like looking at the planes. They kind of bother me sometimes. Okay, let's actually just save this, see what's going on in our overall assembly, see if we're looking good, wind turbine assembly. Okay, well, we're back to the right color. That's great. Let's just check this one more time, switch our terrain. Number two. Okay, good, that's working. Let's go get the decal on here. So first of all, I don't know why my tower is here and it's like not saved. That's sort of bothering me. We sort of had some trouble with the tower before. I don't know what to do here. If I hit save, is it going to mess it up? I don't know. What else do we got going on here? The terrain subassembly is open and it's not saved. Let's just do that. We're going to close this and we're going to hope, we're going to really, really hope that our model still works. Okay. Save this. OK, let's rebuild this. Please work. Don't give us any trouble. I was afraid that what maybe what was going on is that the tower and the terrain were open with changes that the computer was having a hard time resolving. And maybe that's why we had an error earlier in the day. But it looks like that's working, and that's great. And I only have my nacelle cover open now. So I'm going to go back into my nacelle cover, and I'm going to get my decal placed on here. And how are we going to do that? We're going to go over to Render Tools. We're going to say Edit Decal. And we're going to go find our decal that we want. And our decal is going to be in 
wherever I just had this thing provided parts decal decal here we go okay first of all I want to use the alpha channel so that I get the background that's nice and clear I need to go over to the mapping and select the face that I want it to be on it's so that one and um, if I go back over to here, these instructions are telling me blade model, okay, in the cell cover, apply the provided decal as a label, as a label, so that it is sized and oriented very similar to figure 1113. Okay. Two required shots. Left side, right side. Okay, left side, right side. Going back over here to here. Okay, projection label. Okay, what's going to happen when I do this? Label. Okay, first of all, it's obviously upside down, which is not good. Um, but I think I can flip this here. M mirror. Nope. E nope. Both. Yes. Okay. How can I change the shape of this? How can I change the... I can change the orientation that way. If you're going to change the scale, I need to get this. Okay, fixed aspect ratio. I need to get this thing to be smaller. Okay, here we go. We're going to go down to, I don't know, 150. Okay, that's too small, obviously. 200. Okay, first of all, I think it's going to help me if I look at this directly on from the side, since that's what is... Okay, that's what was sort of going on in the image. Okay. It's looking kind of not so cool. Okay, there we go. I want this to be zero. Okay, does this go to the other side? No, that's good, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna look back at the side here. Okay, let's look at this thing. All right, maybe mine's a little bit longer than this one in the guidebook. Okay, one hour, basically one hour into the test now. I need to shrink this just a little bit. So edit, edit my decal, edit, 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 edit my decal, mapping. Let's, let's take this to 190. Yeah, I'm liking that better. Okay, so the 190, got to remember 190, I'm going to put the other side basically in the same way. That's interesting. I wonder if this means anything. Well, I'm sure it does. Okay, look, minus 20 and 90. I'm going to remember that for the other side in case I want to make these sort of be as symmetric as possible. Okay, so now we're going to see if we can get one on this other side. So how are we going to do that? We're going to uh, edit decal again. We're just going to add in another decal. We're going to go get the same decal we had before. Okay, where is that? Got to get back into the desktop, test, provided files, decal, get that decal, grab it. We do the alpha channel. If we don't do the alpha channel, we're going to end up with a black background, which we don't want. Mapping, I'm going to map onto this surface. Oh, look, this one's kind of cool in the sense that maybe, just maybe, actually, we need to switch this to label. Maybe... Whoa, I've really messed that up. Is there a little tiny logo in there? Yes. That's super messed up. Okay, what what did we have before? We had like 190, I think is what we chose here. Okay, so that's helpful to get that back to a size where I can look at it. 
Okay, first of all, this is this sort of whack up here. Why am I selecting all this geometry? Let's clear these selections. There we go, I just got face one. Oh, yeah, 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 here we go. Wonderful. Now we had to do is flip this one way or the other, not that way. Not that way, we flip it both ways. Okay, now let's come in here and look at it from the side. Okay, not, not bad. We did something before where this was negative 20. I don't know if this is a good idea or not. And then this one was 90 on the other side, but it looks like it wants to be negative on this side. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go with it like that. I'm gonna say this is where I was on the other one. Yeah, I'm going for that. Okay, save. Uh, let's go back into our other wind turbine assembly now and see if our decal is there. Yes, it is. Wonderful. I don't know why the decal wouldn't move if the terrain moves, but let's try it just because. I always like to test. You know, I'm testing a lot of stuff here. Okay, that's terrain one because it's up on the hill. Okay, great. Now we have done that. Save, save, save. We are one, pretty much one hour exactly into the test. Just because I'm going to close this nacelle cover. Nacelle cover, nacelle cover. Let's close this. <coughs> now we got to go back to the test. Nacelle cover, great. Blade. So what have we been doing? First of all, we've been building the assembly as we've been going along, and we've been checking it, which is excellent, I think, um, because it means that I've got an I got two hours basically to do the blade model, but it's not going to take that long. So let's just see. We need three screenshots as a deliverable: this, this, and this, and then I need to show what's going on at section CC and EE. Okay. Um, make the blade a surface CAD model consistent with the images provided here and the engineering drawings provided. Use sketch picture to define the cross sections in the CAD system. See provided files. You may use the fully defined sketch command for the cross section sketches. Only use this command for blade cross sections. Oh gosh, I still have an underdefined sketch in my other thing. I'm gonna go fix that. If I'm missing, if Mr. Information is okay, blah blah blah. <laughs> I have a I have an underdefined sketch in my uh, nacelle cover, which is not what I want because dang, should I spend time on this right now? I'm gonna spend time on it right now because I got I got some time and this one, it's this one. Why is this one having trouble? Um, okay, so, I mean, normally we would look at this and we'd say that blue things, blue things are underdefined. This point is blue, so maybe it's underdefined. Why there's another point over here, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not entirely sure why there are two of these. I made only one construction line. Uh, this one's concentric with this, and that's funny because it shouldn't be blue if it was concentric, but we're going to... Why is that like that? Let's delete that for a second. Um, first of all, not entirely sure what this is. I'm not sure what this is. I'm going to delete this, and then something's going to happen. Okay, and then this thing over here, come out like that. I, I really shouldn't be messing with this um, construction line because construction lines don't need to be defined in order to have fully defined sketches. But I'm just going to keep going on this for a second because I don't know what else it is. Now it says it's fully defined, so whatever. At least I've satisfied that. I'm not not feeling so bad anymore. Haha. Uh -huh. 
Okay, that thing's looking kind of cool. All right, let's close this thing. We're done with it. Hopefully that didn't mess up our reconfigurability. Let's go check that just because. You might be asking me, you might be asking yourself, why, why am I doing this reconfigurability thing all the time? Well, I'm doing it actually because I don't want to find out at the end that it doesn't work. I'd like to know that it worked at one stage and then stopped working and I can I can then look at what I might have done in the last set of operations to cause that to happen. Okay, so on to the next piece here, which is the blade. Great, okay, so what do I need to know about the blade? Okay. <laughs> Why, why is it this way? Okay, I think the blade, I think the blade can be made as a CAD model unto itself. Should I do that? Okay, I'm just gonna try that. I'm gonna try to make the blade all by itself and then I'm gonna assemble it. Is that a good idea? Maybe it means my blades won't move. It should mean my blades will move. Okay, we're gonna do this. I'm gonna get, um, I'm gonna write down a few things here on this piece of paper. Okay. Sixty plus 48. Okay, first of all, when, whenever I see a drawing like this and everything is lining up to one spot, that means that spot is important. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my right plane or something like that right on this side. And then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go get some planes that are offset 48, 340, 1,000, 1,800, and, and then I am going to create some cross sections on those planes, and then I'm gonna loft. I'm gonna loft, and here are our cross sections, by the way. All right, so I'm gonna go construct this end first. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna construct this end first and get that all nice and tidy. And then I'm gonna make these planes. And then I'm gonna go draw the sketches on the planes and then I'm gonna loft and then I think we're gonna be done. Actually, I'm gonna have to knit and fill it some stuff because we have uh, these two radii, these two fillets that are done here, okay? So, into SolidWorks. Okay, let's save our wind turbine file. Let's make a brand new file, new. I might regret doing this for some reason, but I'm just gonna go with it anyway. Switch my dimensions to inches and come over here and save this. And I'm gonna save this as blade. Whoops, that's not how you spell blade. Blade. Okay. The right plane, I'm gonna put the right plane right here. And then the center axis is gonna go down the connection of the other two things. So let me just try this here for a second. Okay, first of all, reference geometry, reference geometry axis. This is gonna be my central axis of my blade. Then I'm going to create a one of these things. I'm gonna create an extruded, okay, I, I have no idea what size this is. I will say 36 for now. Jump out of this, come over to this thing. Okay, 89, 89 is my dimension on this outside. Okay, all right, look, maybe I need to draw out some of this stuff for a second, okay? So I got 89 on the radius, or excuse me, the diameter, and that's gonna be 60 
inches long. Wow, that's giant. I guess these blades are giant. And then I am going to have a, a end. I'm going to have a thing on the end with a bunch of circles. And those circles are 3, 7.5 inches away from the center. And they are 6 inch diameter. And there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 of them. Okay, I got enough off this drawing where I think I can actually just go in and, and do some of this stuff now. So first of all, I need to edit this sketch and change my dimension to 89. Okay, 89, excellent. Then I'm going to take that sketch and I'm going to create a surface extrude. And um, I want to go in that direction. And the way that I want to do this is it's going to become 60 inches. Yep, just like that. And then I'm going to put a planar surface on this. Excellent. And then I am going to, do I want to do that? Okay, yeah, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to make a sketch on here. And I am going to pop a six inch circle in here. Okay, did we say six inches? Yeah, six inches. And then from here to here is 37.5. 37.5, excellent. Now uh, we're going to take this and we're going to do a sketch pattern. Oh, good. It's already giving me what I want. Except there are 12 of these. 12. That's it. Okay, great. Yeah, now I have to figure out what I'm going to do with this. Okay. So, okay, let's see. Dang, why is this underdefined? Okay. Let's go figure out why this is underdefined. Oh, yes. Okay. So, we use sketch pattern. Sketch pattern, I think, is maybe one of the only ways to do this with a surface model. But it doesn't, you know, it does kind of a poor job knowing where everything is supposed to be. So first of all, we're going to say these are equal to each other. And that's going to help. And then, hmm, we are going to have to create a construction circle. Construction circle, haha. Huh. Um, OK. We're going to create a circle that's right in the center of this. and goes right over to this. Excellent. Oops. Escape. OK. This guy's going to be a construction. And then we're going to take this and this and tell it to be that way. OK. Then we're going to take this. is sort of annoying. Uh, I think this is going to work. Is it not working? Yes. Yes. Wow. OK. Somehow they've all, wow. It somehow decided I wanted to do that everywhere, which is absolutely true. Wonderful. Okay, so now we're fully defined on that. Now, it's hard to tell, but those lines are in there. One way to do this, if we had to, would be to just go over to this, and we can see that those guys are in there. Okay. Not entirely sure what to do here. Um, let's turn this off. Uh, it's so hard to see. Okay, I think that I can, I think there is a way. Okay, first of all, I need to just kind of see any other way I can see this for a minute. Okay, I gotta get holes in here. I gotta get holes in here. Trim, trim, trim. That's what I wanna do. Okay, let's take this sketch. Let's trim. Trim surface. Yes. Okay, if I click on this, this is the one I'm gonna keep this one. Uh, wonderful. I think that might have done it. Yes. Okay. 
So that's that. Now we also have, um, let's knit these two together. Knit and merge entities. Let's fill it this corner. Oh, can I do it? Come on. Not that. Fill it. Okay, I do not have any recollection of what that number should be. Is it three? Let's go back to the drawing and check. Oh yeah, it is three actually. Good random, good random thought. Okay, great. Now what we want to do is we, I'm going to write down some of these numbers. We're going to make a plane that is 48 inches off, then 340 inches off, then 1,000 inches off, then 1,800 inches off, and then 2,208 inches off from the right plane that we put right over there. So let's go do that. Let's turn these planes back on because we're going to need to be looking at that kind of stuff now. Save this. Save. From here, we need reference geometry, make a plane, we want to flip the direction on that, and we got to go 48 inches. Great, that's our first cross section. I'm going to go back over to the right plane. Oh, come on. Right plane. There we go, right plane. Reference geometry, plane. I'm going to flip direction again, and now we are at 340. Wonderful. Now it's just the TDM. Is that even a word? It's the tedious nature of just going and putting all these cross sections in here. 1,000. OK. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. Right. Now we're going to put in a plane. 1,800. OK. 1,800. And then a flip direction on that. Okay, great. Click that guy. Reference geometry. Plane 2208 is where we want to be. Uh oh, wrong way. Edit that. Flip offset. Great. Excellent. Now, now what we're going to do is we've got to go do the hard work here. Each of these planes now gets a cross section on them. Save this. Wind turbine. No. Let's go to this. Okay, so first of all, we've taken care of this. We've taken care of these planes. Okay. And we're now, and we, and we took care of this radius. We've not done this. We just have to go get all of these in here. Okay, this one's obviously a circle, and it's 44.5. What is this? That's weird. I'm going to make the assumption that this circle is in the middle and that it's 44.5, which means it's 89. That's the same, that's the same dimension. I'm just because I happen to write it down right next to the other one. It's the same dimension as the existing part already. So going into here, then... Okay, this is this is good. So in here, then we want to make a sketch. Sketch, and let's look at the other side of this sketch. I'm not sure what side we looked at. Yeah, okay. And let's convert entities. And let's just take that, and we are set on that one. That's our first cross section. Wonderful. Okay. Now we are on plane two. Okay, so from the drawing, the one we just did was section BB. Now this one's going to be section CC. Am I looking at the right side of that? No, let's flip it around. Okay. And make sure I'm always doing this in the right way. What way is the drawing going? The drawing is, is actually pointing in the direction. Oh, 
Okay, I can go with the default on this. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a sketch tool and I'm going to use a sketch picture. And I'm going to go back to the provided parts, blade cross sections. We're now on section CC. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is great. Um, Okay, I'm going to take them all in like this. Okay. Okay, so this is this is interesting. I have to go get a line that's 46.2 put in here before I can know how to scale this properly. So I'm going to jump out of this, save it. I'm going to go up above Sketch 4. And I'm going to put another sketch on here, sketch three, I guess. And let's go look at that sketch three. What I'm struggling with at the moment is deciding whether I should be looking down the blade from the base or to through the blade to the base. I guess I better look in the same exact way that the that the engineering drawing is, which is it's looking from the base down to the tip. That just means I have to look through the base all the time, which is sort of annoying. So maybe what I can do is maybe I can take some of this and hide them. Like I can hide this. Yeah. Great. Because I had knit that together, the whole thing is hidden. Yeah, that means I can go like that and bring it back. So I'm going to just hide that whole thing. OK, I am on plane two, trying to make a sketch on plane two. And I believe it's sketch three that I'm working on right now. OK, and then I needed a line that was from the center some direction. And it had some dimension associated with it. And it was like 24 or something. I don't remember what it was, but we'll go check right now. OK, it's 46.2. 46.2. OK, 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 OK. So if I'm looking down this thing, now I need, I need a vertical line. That's what I need is a vertical line, not a horizontal line. I don't know. This, is, this just depends on which way I'm orienting it orienting it. Let's, okay, 46.2. Okay, 46.2. Okay, let's just take that for now. And let's go get sketch this sketch back on. Okay, yeah, and that's going in that same direction. So we're gonna, we're gonna go with it that way. Okay, let's go edit this sketch. Can I edit this? Am I editing this? Okay, first of all, let's go look at this right on. OK. I don't know what just happened. Did I hide it? OK. First of all, Sketch three was something. Sketch five is that one. I'm just going to delete this sketch four. I don't really know what happened to my thing. So now on this plane, I'm going to create a new sketch. In my new sketch, I'm going to insert a sketch tool, a sketch picture, and I want to be section CC. Well, I should have freshened up on some of this stuff. OK, great. Excellent. Can I move this? Yes. OK, 
Now what I want to do is uh, look directly down this and get it all lined up. Here we go. Okay, that would be like that. But then this little line that's right there is how big this other one needs to be. So Yep. Okay, once I get the first one down, I think it's going to be a lot easier to do this. Shrink that a little bit. I'm lining the central axis up with the axis. Okay, it's got to get a little smaller. It's looking good. Okay, so I want that thing to be there. Great. Ooh, okay, now I gotta make another sketch on that plane. Okay, which plane was that? It's plane two. First, I gotta get out of this sketch. Okay, plane two, plane two, plane two. I'm gonna make another sketch on plane two. That's going to be sketch seven. And now, yes, now I'm going to copy this geometry. How far can I go with the three point curve? Excellent. Hmm. I could do this with a spline or I could do it like this. I don't really like splines. Splines really bother me. <laughs> they don't really bother me. They only kind of bother me. Can I get all the way over to this one? Wonderful. We're going to go with it like that. Okay. Um, this is good. I really want to not look at this sketch for a minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Let's go get some geometric relations in here that will help us. This one and this one, we will make them tangent. This one and this one will make it tangent. That's not working. And this one and this one, we make it tangent. This one and this one, make it tangent. And this one and this one, make it tangent. We should have a beautiful uh, cross section. And let's see how it compares to this. That's not 100% right right now, but I can pull that up. And we're going to go with it like that and say that that's good. Okay, just to see if our sort of model is going down the right path. I'm hiding now some of that stuff we don't need. Uh, we are going to we're going to create a surface loft from here to here, and then all the way down. Okay, so that looks like that's going to work. We can cancel that. Okay, now we just have to repeat what we just did three more times, and then maybe just maybe, just maybe. We are set. Okay. So on to number three now. Okay, so a few things have to happen here. Um, we need to make a sketch. And one of the things we need to do on our sketch is we need to make a horizontal line from the axis out to something. We need to dimension this. And that is, I don't know what that's going to be. It's not going to be that big. But we'll go back over here and check. 30.6. 30.6. 30.6. 30.6. 30.6. OK, excellent. Let me take that. Now we're going to create on plane 3. Yep, plane 3. We're going to create a new sketch. In this sketch, we're going to put in our uh, sketch tools, sketch image. We are now on a sketch DD, excuse me, section DD. Um, I'm going to come over here and look at this straight on. Okay. like this, but I need this star to line up with this little dot that's right here. Yep, 
Yeah, and that's pretty good. So we're gonna save that. Kevin, now we can go in for an hour and a half on this test. Save, save, save. Okay, now I'm gonna get out of this sketch. And I gotta just sort of think sequence of operations here. On plane three, I'm gonna create another sketch now. I wanna look directly onto that. I'm gonna use my three point arcs again. So right up here, somewhere around the inflection point. And then from here over to, you know, somewhere around there. Then this one is a real a gradual thing. Well, that's a lot of three point arcs here. Is it a good idea? Is it a bad idea? I'm not sure. That should have closed. Uh, and it maybe did, maybe didn't. Let's go hide this sketch. And yes, it did close. Let's go look at that straight on again and get our tangencies in here that we want. This thing and this thing become tangent. Of course, if we use a spline, we don't have to do these relationships like this. Okay, that's not working. Um, And frankly, after I get this working the way I want to, I need to go back and fully define all the sketches, which I can do using the fully defined sketch command, which in my opinion is okay for crazy things like this, but not okay for other things. So let's uh, turn this sketch back on, see how off we are. Okay, we just need to pull this guy out a little bit. Yep, there we go. We're gonna take that one as being good. Okay, we're gonna come in here and hide this sketch again. Okay, wonderful. So there's three of our profiles. And actually I think we need the one that's before this that I've hidden as well. So uh, let's save this and then we just gotta keep going. Like I said, tedium, if that's a word, okay. A sketch, is this sketch 10 or sketch 11? Which one's sketch 10 and which one's sketch 11? Hmm, I'm not sure. Actually, am I in? What am I in right now? Okay, and this one is that, okay. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna make a new sketch on this. Okay, and what I need to do on this one is the same exact strategy. I'm going to make myself a line, some amount, some length. I'm going to dimension that. This is going to be used to scale my stuff. So let's just see where we are on this one. 22.5. Okay, 22.5. Switch this one, 22.5. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to be done with that sketch. And now I'm going to pop in my sketch image into plane four, right clicking on it saying I want to create a new one. Tools, sketch tools, sketch picture, 22.51 is section EE. Okay. This thing's got to get like way bigger. Let's just come down, look at this edge. Okay, still gotta get bigger. Needs to be a little bit bigger. Okay, so this is working out for us. Uh, it's slightly annoying to have to do so much of this little stuff, but this is what it takes to get an airfoil, which is what this blade is. We need these different cross sections to find. Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna take that and uh, be done with that sketch. And now I'm going to create a new sketch on this plane that traces that geometry. Let's go look at that. Okay, so this looks like almost like one nice beautiful giant curve, maybe till about right there. 
Okay. And then this one, very similar situation. Okay, and then we just got a little guy right in here. And unfortunately, I just clicked that in such a way that these points are not connected, but they need to become connected. Okay, excellent. So now we're going to come turn off the sketch image. And we should have had a closed surface, which we don't have. Not sure why. So that's OK. Let's just go define what we want, which is this and this to be tangent to each other. And we want to get this and this tangent to each other. OK, our closed surface should have changed colors. Hmm. Do I have something extra in there? No. Control Z. There we go. Why it did that? I don't know. It sort of had a graphics refresh problem or something like that. OK, let's go look down this axis. Let's turn this sketch back on. And we're looking good there, so I'm going to turn that sketch off. We'll be done with this thing. And we've got one, one, one more to go. And. <laughs> Not entirely sure that I'm interpreting the note that's on the drawing relative to this plane very well. So I'm gonna make a new sketch. Uh, again, I gotta scale, I gotta scale everything just right. So I'm gonna get a line in here from this axis over to here. This is gonna be like a small line. I don't remember what okay, I'm not into that. Cancel that. It's because of this relationship that just showed up right here. Okay, this relationship needs to be deleted. Okay, now this can be a number. I don't know what it is. Seven. Let's pretend it's seven for a second. Thirteen point six is the number that we want. Thirteen point six. Okay. 13.6. Okay, done with that sketch. Now we're going to produce another sketch on this plane. Another sketch on this plane. And we are going to insert. I need to pause and send someone a text message real fast, which has nothing to do with this test. that. Now I'm going to come in here, take a look right down this end. Okay, so part of what's going on here is that we have to remain sort of systematic in everything that we're doing, because there's just sort of a lot to keep track of, a lot to manage. Okay, let's see. This thing, center axis, i get a little bit bigger on this. Slightly bigger. OK, that's good. Now, this is our last shape. So we're going to jump out of this sketch. <laughs> we don't want to accidentally you know, put them all in the same sketch, or, or else we run into trouble. I can't loft from one of these sketch images. Okay, let's go look at that direct on. Now I'm going to try this with three point curve still. Excuse me, three point arc. I like the three point arc. It, it's, a, it's a nice command. Going over here till about the inflection point. 
Why? Because I need the second half of the arc to go the other direction. OK, I think that this is, this is good. Let's hide this. OK, good. We're close to cross-section on that. Let's go get the geometric relations that we want, just to make that tangent. OK, now this is going to change our shape a bit down here. So we're going to have to go double check this one. Tangent. Tangent. So you got to have a bit of faith in the sense that uh, it's taken a lot of work just to get up to the point of being able to do a loft. So you got to have some faith in, in knowing that your process or your steps or whatever are mattering or are going to work. So by the way, I'm not going to go fully define these until I've got my loft working the way I want it to. Okay, so now let's turn off these planes. We're ready for the action. And we are going to go put this knit surface back on. There it is. All right, so we're going to loft from here to here to here to here to here to here and cross our fingers and hope that it all works just the way we want it to. Let's go hide this sketch, which we don't want dangling around over here. Okay, and it will help me actually to have a sense for where this, where these planes are so that I can click at a similar spot on all of these so that the blade doesn't twist as we go down. Okay, surface loft, here we go. From here, to here, to here, to here. So far it's giving me a preview, which is good. One more, one more, to here. Okay, so I'm sad that we don't have a preview. That usually means we've run into a problem. Okay, let's just hit go though and see what happens. Feature could not be created because it would produce self-intersecting geometry. Okay, well this um, seems to have happened when we get the last one in there. Okay, so maybe, okay, first of all, what is this? Okay, that's part of my sketch that I don't want. Okay, can I move these control points anywhere? Don't want to do that. Okay, let's delete all this, clear all these for a second. Let's try it again. Let's try it from this side first. From here to here. Try to be more careful on where I'm picking here. To here. Okay, that didn't work. That didn't work. I didn't like that piece. OK. I do have a point on the back of these. Should I try the backs? Let's try it from here to here to here to here. This one looks like it might work to here to here. Okay. First of all, we got a preview, which is awesome. Let's take this and then take a look at what it's looking like. Let's hide these, these guys. Okay. I'm not seeing an obvious twist in there. And we don't want to have a twist uh, because the the assignment says it should not twist. But we can do this with our zebra stripes. Oh, great. OK. I can just tell from the zebra stripes it's not twisting. That's that side. And there's this side. OK. Great. So that's that. What we have to do is go finish up this end now over here. Let's save this thing. Save. Hmm. Get off of our zebra stripes. Come over here to surfaces. Come in here into planar surface. Oh, good. Okay. Now what I want to do is knit this. I got to knit all these together before I can fill it anything. 
So I grab this thing, I see, knit, I'm gonna grab this, this, and this, and merge those entities together, and it worked, yay, that's great. Now we can do a fillet, and our fillet is going to be 2.5, is what the drawing said, 2.5 here, it's gonna work. Got a preview, which is great. Okay, excellent. So we are we are set on this. Let's save this thing. Save. That took a long time to do that part. Let's go over to the wind turbine now. And we are going to attempt to put a blade in here. Okay, so insert component, insert component, blade. Great. We're approximately the right size. That's good. We want this face, okay, this face, and this face to be coincident. That's right. I want this axis and this axis to be coincident. Wonderful. Now we just have one other problem here, which is where this should be. So this is the trailing edge. Okay, here, let's move this. Oh, wow, look, my surface has a funny, the heck is that? Okay, that's not cool. I might have to go so change that. Okay. It's called the trailing edge, so we want the trailing edge to be trailing like this. See, the wind comes in this way, trailing edge is over here. Save this document. Okay, we're going to go with this for now. Oh, okay, so what we got to do is we want to get this fully constrained in here. We're going to have to go get some of those bolt holes to line up. Oh good, this is good. I need this cross section. Okay, here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want this and this to be concentric. Okay, great. And I think that's going to be uh, good enough for us. Save this thing. Get rid of this. Let's just do a circular pattern here. Circular pattern, components to pattern, blade, direction. Use this. Great, we want three. Boom. Okay, uh, let's save this thing. Then we gotta go, is there something wrong with that tip? No, it's just showing the sketches, which I don't like. So let's turn off those sketches. <sighs> moment of truth, moment of truth. We're gonna see if this thing moves. Okay, we can stop looking at the axes now. Okay, tower, terrain, default, turbine location one. Come on, blades move, excellent. Turbine location two, great. Turbine location default. Excellent. Okay, let's take a look at our model and see how we're doing here. We have uh, nacelle cover, blade, these are all fully defined, that's excellent. We know we have some blade work to do because we have, um, we have some things here in our surface, no, like none of our cross sections are defined. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna go fix these. Blade, uh, and actually, Dang, we've got a little bit of time. I'm approaching two hours. I think that it would be valuable for me to go figure out what's going on with my blade because my blade has, okay, that side's looking nice. Okay, a little, a little funny is going on right here. See this thing? That's not cool. 
How do we fix that? Can we fix that? Okay. I think it would be valuable for me to see approximately where is this happening. Something odd is happening around this cross section, which is on plane three. Okay. I think we may also solve this by having the loft come from this side. But there could be something going on at cross section 3, which is this one. Let's go look at this. Well, it looks beautiful. This is tangent, this is tangent. Well, that's the cross section it's supposed to be, so I shouldn't change the cross section. I'm going to I'm going to just do one other thing here. And if this doesn't work, I'm just going to say this is good enough for now. And that is I'm going to go back to my surface knit. And not in the knit. I'm going to go back to the surface loft. And I'm going to suppress this for a minute. And I'm going to right after my surface loft, I'm going to try a new surface loft. OK. And I've turned off my sketches. No, I haven't. I have, can I grab these sketches? I think I can grab these. What happens if I just grab them without even picking on them? Wouldn't that be interesting? Well, first of all, it's not giving me a preview, so that's not good. Um, <laughs> oh, because of the order that it's been done in. So delete all these. Delete these, delete these, delete these. Clear all these. Clear selections. OK. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. So first of all, we need to go get that first sketch, which is on the surface extrude, which is here. And then we need to go backwards. I wonder, this is interesting. It's having a little bit of a hard time here. OK, that one did not. That one failed. OK. See, it's important that I grab them all in one, uh, in one go so that I have a nice smooth thing. I could actually do this um, normal to vector, director, vector, tangent. OK. OK, so let's move down. Let's clear all these. I'm just going to try one more thing here. OK, we're going to go from here to here to here to here to here and then to here. That gives me a full thing, but it does look like it's just started to protrude out of here again. This may have given us the identical loft to what we already have. Let's get rid of the zebra stripes for a minute. I'm trying to produce the best model that I can. Yeah, 
Yeah, so see, there's a little funny thing in here, which is not great. Okay, but I've done the cross sections the way they were asked to be done. And I'm just going to take this as it is. So I'll just save this. I'll keep my loft three that's there. And I'll come put these end pieces on. Is that possible? Okay, this one might tell me it does not have the surface for that. Okay, I'm going to suppress this loft, uh, unsuppress this, unsuppress this, and now I'm just back to what I had earlier. So I can actually just come in here and delete this loft. Just to have a clean model. Okay, so now that I've decided I'm going to go with this, I'm going to go get the rest of the stuff worked out. So I'm going to go into this sketch, edit this sketch, come up here into these relations, say fully define, take the default, hit go on that. Okay, then I'm going to do the same thing right here with these. This is giving me a fully defined sketch so that if I go and change some things later, the, the sketch is not going to act erratically. It's important, one of the qualities of our engineering work, our engineering drawings, etc., our engineering CAD models, is that we have, we don't have things that are dangling out there and are underdefined. Okay, so those are all defined now. So are all my other sketches. Okay, I'm going to come in here, assign my material, edit material. I'm going to guess, but I'm going to have to go check in a minute, that it is an AISI 1020 into the drawing here. Oh, no, 6061 aluminum. Okay, so I go back into this, edit material. Got to get out of steel, got to get into aluminum, got to go get the 6061. Where is the 6061? 6061 alloy, apply, close. Excellent. Okay, now we're going to go paint this thing, so to speak. Sprayed. Make this to our whole body. Going to go make this. Edit appearance, edit appearance, edit appearance. 255. 255. 255. And save this thing. Save. We come over here into our wind turbine. Let me save this thing, and we are just about done. Those are good. Let's go change our terrain, move it around, see how it works. I'm exactly two hours into the test. What I would need to do now is go take my screenshots, turn the stuff in. I've done a lot of checking. Actually, I need to do one other thing here, which is do the interference analysis. Okay, did the interference analysis tell me at what configuration to do the interference analysis? Let's go find out. I need to make that adjustment, I think, to the to the test if it is not. Okay. So we're gonna do that for for location one. All right, so I'm in location default right now. I'm going to go up to location one. Save this. Save in this location. Save, save, save. Evaluate. And I'm going to do interference detection. And I'm going to calculate. And I do have interference between the terrain and the slab to the 
Okay, this is great. I'm realizing my units for my assembly are in not the right units. So this is perfect. We're going to save this and hope that nothing crashes. Save. Now we're going to come back in here and do this interference detection. And we're going to calculate. Okay. Okay, that's right. I, I should only be having interference between the slab and the earth. Now, why? They actually just occupy the same space. This interference analysis should inspire me to go in and change the terrain model. Okay, so that's that. We are done. What have we learned during this test? We have learned that in order to get models to reconfigure and work with each other well based on new things such as new terrain locations or things like that, we've got to construct the models based on using the master modeling approach, which is what we just did. The master modeling approach means that the terrain is driving the shape of the tower and the location of the tower and the nacelle generator is driving the shape of the nacelle cover. And that's it. Those are the two things we had going on there. Um, hope you found this instructive. I hope that you take some time to realize that getting a strategy together and thinking about how to work through the pieces makes a big difference in executing well. And also, I'm hoping that you've just learned a little bit about how to do this and how to check your work as you're going along. Okay, thanks. See ya.